we have learnt that the bones they are connected to each other and hence they form a framework. Now this point at which the bones are connected to each other is what you call a joint. Okay, so if they ask you how do you define joints, so you will say joints is a place where two bones meet. Okay, now when we look into the structure of a joint, we will see this place as, imagine these are the two bones, these are the ends of bones, okay, and this is the place where these two are joining together okay now you will observe a few important things in here the first thing is that bones they are covered with cartilage at their end what is cartilage cartilage is a soft tissue it's a soft structure okay which covers the ends of the bones why does it do so it does it because this cartilage it prevents the friction between these all right now when we talk about cartilage a little more, we see that cartilage is not only present at the ends of the bone, but it is present at different parts of our body as well. For example, it is present in your ear pinna. You can observe that it is so soft, right? Similarly, it is also present in the joint between the ribs and the sternum. So there are a number of cartilages present in the different parts of your body and here between the two bones they have a main function to prevent the friction between the two. Alright, now next we will see that the bones will be connected to each other with a band like structure. So this is a band like structure and this band has got a name which is ligament. Now what is ligament? Well, ligament is a band like structure which connects or joins the two bones together. So if you remember we have studied that bones and muscles are connected together with the help of a tendon. So tendon connects bones and muscles and ligament connect bones and bones. Do remember this question is very very important that what is the difference between ligament and a tendon. Alright, so both of the ligament and tendon they are fibrous in nature and they have different things to connect together. So this is the structure of a joint. Now one more thing, you might have heard the name ligament with by some doctor also. Why do I say so? I say it because when you play, lot of times you fall and you get your ligament ruptured. And this rupturing or excessive pulling of ligament is what you call sprain. So usually doctors suggest you to take a lot of rest when you have got your ligament ruptured. Okay, so ligament, it is thin band like structure which may get ruptured when you fall down or when you meet an accident. So this was about the joint. Now in your body there are different types of joints. Now the question arises that how do we classify these joints? We do it on the basis of movement which means that in our body there are different types of movement. There can be a free movement, there can be a very slight movement or there can be no movement at all. So on the basis of the movement, we can define or you know, we can just divide the different types of joints. The first of type of joint, like I said, would be immovable. As its name suggests, this type of joint is formed at places where there is no movement. For example, in the skull. So in your head, the cranium is present. Okay, this part, the cranium is present. In the cranium, if you observe the bone, they are highly fused to each other and you will see that there is no movement. So in the skull, except for the lower jaw, which is movable, no other bone can be moved. Okay, so that's why we call such a type of joint as immovable joint. Next would be slightly movable joint. What is slightly movable? As the name suggests, of course, this type of joint is observed where slight movement is allowed, okay? And this type of movement can be seen between the ribs and sternum. So ribs which are connected with the sternum, you can observe very slight movement between these two, okay? And hence we call this slightly movable joint, all right? So we have seen two different types of joints, the immovable and the slightly movable. Now what could be the third type? It could be the 
freely movable joints. Okay, so let's see the third one, the freely movable one. Now in freely movable also you will observe that there can be different types of joints present under this category. So under this category the first type of joint that we will observe would be the ball and socket joint. Okay, ball and socket which means at the end of one bone there is a ball like structure. Okay, it is curved, it is rounded and with the second bone there is a socket present. So you can observe it in here that the ball of the end of one bone it gets fitted into the socket of the other and hence they form this joint which is the ball and socket joint. The ball and socket joint can be observed in your hand and in your leg. Okay, So the upper arm it moves in all the directions and we see that there is ball and socket joint present in here. Alright, so when we say in the arm, this bone is called the humerus. The, so the humerus has a ball like end which gets fitted into the pectoral girdle. Alright, it gets fitted into there in the socket and now the hand can be moved in all the directions. Similarly, like I said, in the legs also, for example, we will say in the thigh particularly, the thigh bone is called as femur. So this femur it gets fitted into the pelvic girdle okay and now we see that these two are the example of ball and socket joint. The next type of joint under the freely movable joint they are called the pivot joint. Now what is a pivot joint? Pivot joint is very similar to the ball and socket joint. Here we see it is found in the neck region. So you can move your head in the front at the back sides as well right so this is the neck joint here we will see again that the rounded part of one bone it gets fitted into the dent of another bone here these two bones they belong to the vertebrae all right so it is found in the neck the third joint is the hinge joint now hinge joint can be simply understood by understanding the movement at a door. So what happens at a door? It moves in one plane, right? Same happens at the hinge joint also. So you can see that hinge joint only one plane movement can be observed. For example, in elbow or in the knee, it moves only in one direction, right? So this is the example of hinge joint, which is the elbow or it can be the knee also, all right? So these are the three different types of freely movable joint we have seen till now. The last is the gliding joint. Now what is a gliding joint? In the gliding joint you observe that two bones can glide over each other. So you can see here that these two bones they show slight movement only. Okay, that is not a lot of movement. But for example in your wrist, you can move your wrist like this. Okay, similarly your ankle, you can move your ankle in the similar way. So here one bone glides over the other and hence we call it a gliding joint. And like I said the example is wrist and the second example can be your ankle. Now you know there are so many bones present in your body. So why don't you pick up any joint and I'll try and understand that what kind of movement it shows and you can figure out that what sort of joint is present in there. So this was about the joints and in this lesson you have learned that this is the structure of a joint where will, you will find that two bones are connected with the help of ligament. We have learned the different types of joints also. Firstly we have seen the immovable joints which are found in the skull, the slightly movable joint which can be observed in ribs and sternum, the freely movable joint. These are very, very important. Here we have seen the different types. First one was the ball and socket. Second, we have seen the pivot. Third as the hinge and last as the gliding joint. So till now you have understood about the bones. You have learned about the joints as well.